Let's compare GNOMES in 5e and Pathfinder 2nd edition. First of all, warning up front, I do pronounce GNOMES with a hard G. There are reasons. I'm going to try to pronounce it with a silent G, but fair warning, I will probably switch back and forth unexpectedly. Unlike my previous videos comparing dwarves and elves, I want to start with lore. Gnomes in the Forgotten Realms have no creation myth. They believe gnomes have always existed and probably always will. Their primary god is Garl Glittergold, a golden-skinned, fun-loving god, almost a, a trickster god, not quite, who defeated Kertulmak, the kobold god. While they tend to get along well with halflings, in many ways, gnomes have more in common in, in, in the realms with dwarves. The written gnomish language uses the dwarven alphabet, and gnomes tend to work and dwell underground. Of the two sub-races offered in the 5e player's handbook, in fact, both are related to a subterranean life. Unlike the hard-working dwarves, however, gnomes view life as equal parts, work and play, with one being just as important as the other. The Dragonlance setting, which is one of my favorite settings, and it also has just come out with 5e, so I may as well mention it for those reasons, but the Dragonlance setting has kind of set the tone for D&D gnomes over the years. It, it, it had a major influence in how they're seen. In Dragonlance, gnomes were created by the god Reorks during some cosmic experimentation, and they're seen by some as divine mistakes. Krinish gnomes are tinkerers by default. They're inventors who believe that magic is just technology not yet understood. They each have a life quest, which they pursue obsessively once they figure out what it is, and it usually has something to do with a, with a great invention. Most gnomes dwell in Mount Nevermind, a subterranean facility for research and development. Gnomes of Kryn are responsible for inventing a time travel device. They've invented a flying ship that goes all the way to the moon Lunatari. They've had several iterations of the concept of an elevator, uh, including the Gnome Flinger, and much, much more. Now, the gnomes of Pathfinder's Galarian are so far removed from the world's creation that they don't even actually belong on the material plane. They're fey creatures by nature, which makes them related to creatures like fairies and pixies, displacer beasts and blink dogs. Given this heritage, gnomes have a little inherent magic to them, which we'll see in some of the character build options. A little like Dragonlance Kender, they're driven to explore and experiment and to experience new things. In fact, a gnome losing curiosity and wanderlust risks catching the bleaching, a draining and withering disease that can lead to death. A, a gnome's life literally depends on activity and endless discovery. Ability scores. In 5e, gnomes get intelligence plus 2, pathfinder 2, constitution plus 2, charisma plus 2, strength minus 2, and then a plus 2 to an attribute of your choice. It may look like you're getting a lot more with Pathfinder 2, but that's only because in 5e, you've already boosted a lot of your scores with dice rolls. It, it tends to even out in practice. Size. Both 5e and Pathfinder 2nd edition gnomes are small. 5e gnomes are said to stand from 2 to 3.5 feet tall, while Pathfinder 2 gnomes stand just over 3 feet in height. So both are about a meter tall on average. Speed. In 5e, 25 feet. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, 25 feet. It's worth noting that it used to be 20 feet in Pathfinder 1st Edition. Both systems account for the presumed length of your stride as a little gnome. Interestingly though, dwarves in Pathfinder 2 only get a speed of 20 feet, making the smaller gnomes faster than a dwarf. I assume this is supposed to express that gnomes are a little bit more nimble and spry than dwarves in general. Dark Vision. 5e and Pathfinder 2 both grant gnomes the ability to see in some degree of darkness. In 5e, gnomes get dark vision. You get to see in darkness as if it were dim light, and you can see in dim light as if it were bright light for 60 feet. In Pathfinder 2, gnomes get low light vision. You can see in dim light as if it were bright light, and you can ignore the concealed condition due to dim light. Illusion magic. In 5e, copy and pasted from the dwarf racial trait. Gnomes have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws against magic. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you get nothing! Unless you choose 
illusion sense as your first level ancestry feat. You gain a plus one bonus to perception checks and will saves against illusions. I'm not sure why 5e gnomes are resistant to magic. I could not personally find a reason in the lore to explain that. So I'm kind of assuming that it's just based on their relation to dwarves. Galarian gnomes are, of course, historically fey creatures, so they have illusion sense available as an option. It's worth noting that Pathfinder 1st Edition gnomes had that bonus automatically. All, all gnomes. Weapon proficiencies. In both systems... You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! In Pathfinder 2, however, you can spend your ancestry feat on gnome weapon familiarity. Heritages, or subrace in 5e. 5e has two subraces. Pathfinder 2 has five heritages. The 5e Deep Gnome and Pathfinder Chameleon Gnome both tie into the idea that gnomes, like halflings, are often invisible to big folk, either because they're just physically small and easy to literally overlook, or because they tend to be underestimated and people just filter them out visually. So deep gnomes, or Sverfneblen, get a plus one to dexterity and superior dark vision, so that's 120 feet instead of 60. They also get advantage on stealth to hide in rocky terrain. The chameleon gnome, you can change your color and you get a plus two to stealth checks. The 5e Rock Gnome and Pathfinder Umbral Gnome both address the underground gnome archetype. 5e Rock Gnome. Plus one to Constitution. Artificer's Lore. You double proficiency on intelligence checks to determine the history of a magical device. And Tinkering. You can create small clockwork devices. In Pathfinder 2, Umbral Gnome, you get dark vision instead of just low light vision. Two of the other Pathfinder 2nd Edition heritages address the magical nature of Galarian gnomes. Fey touched gnome, you're mechanically fey in addition to humanoid, and you can choose one cantrip from the primal spell list. You can change your cantrip by spending 10 minutes to realign yourself with your fey nature. Wellspring gnome, choose arcane, divine, or occult as your spell list. When you gain a new spell from a gnome ancestry feat, you can choose your spell from, from your chosen list instead of the default primal list. And then finally, the 5th Pathfinder 2nd Edition Heritage helps you build a gnome who's attuned to the material plane. This feels pretty arbitrary to me, and I'm not sure what lore it's trying to reference, but arbitrary can be fun, I guess. It's a sensate gnome. You get a plus 2 bonus to perception when trying to locate a creature within 30 feet. Hit points. In 5e, you don't get hit points by race, but you can take the rock gnome subrace, and that'll grant plus one to your constitution, which could affect your HP. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you get eight hit points when you choose the gnome ancestry, and you'll get more when you choose your class. Broadly, there seem to be two types of gnomes. There are the underground worker gnomes and the tinkerer gnomes. And the two aren't always distinct from one another. Sometimes those are the same gnomes. In both systems, gnomes are considered early creations that are just a little out of place in the fantasy modern time of Toril or Kryn or Galarian. In each case, the implication is that gnomes were sort of concept art for a different iteration of reality, but accidentally got put into a later iteration anyway. It's a fun and weird concept, and you can play up any of the different gnomish aspects as you please, and that's well supported by the character build process for, for both systems. Build a magical explorer, a shadowy underground tinkerer, uh, a magical tinkerer, an artist of clockwork gadgets. Whatever you build, a gnome is up for adventure and a lot of fun to play. Thanks for watching.